Hi guys, thanks for joining me. One of the coolest features in Zen Server 8.5 is the Zen Server Plugins Gallery. The gallery is a new online marketplace for plugins that extend Zen Server's functionality in a variety of ways and that have been developed by and for the Zen Server community. What are plugins? Plugins are actually pieces of code that extend Zen Server in either or both of the following two ways. They can add panels to Zray displaying additional information about your environment that you want shown, or they can define the routing logic for your application's requests. What you're about to see in this video is a short tutorial on how to write a Zray plugin. In this case, we'll be writing a Zray plugin for WordPress apps that extracts and displays a list of loaded WordPress plugins. By the way, it's based on the official Zray WordPress plugin that's bundled with Zen Server. Before we start, all the documentation you need to learn how to build a plugin for Zray or Route plugin is on GitHub. So let's get started. Your first step is to go to the plugins folder in your ZenServe installation files and create a new folder with the name of your plugin. Obviously, you'll need to move the existing WordPress plugin, which is bundled with ZenServer, first. In this folder, we're going to create an additional folder to contain our Zray plugin. And within the second folder, we're going to create a new PHP file called Zray. This file is the plugins include file, and it's good practice to have it located in the root of the plugin directory. Great, now let's start to actually develop the plugin. First, we're going to enter a class for declaring the new plugin. This class is the main API for defining all the plugins, trace actions, and metadata. Next, we're going to enable the plugin. To do this, we're going to enter the following expression. We're basically telling Zero to load the plugin after the WordPress initial constants method is called. We're using this function because it's the first WordPress function that's called on a page, so it's a good trigger. The next part is to declare a trace on a particular function. This part's the beating heart of your plugin, defines the function you want to hook into during runtime, when you want to hook into it, upon entry or exit, what's to be executed, or in other words, what information Zray needs to store and display, and how. This declaration will include the name of the function to be traced, and two callables which are fired when entering and exiting the function. In our case, we're going to use the WordPress cache close function, because we know this is a good time to retrieve the WordPress plugins. We can leave the entry callable empty, but we're going to develop the exit callable a bit. First, we're going to add two parameters that the trace function callable method accepts. Context is an array of information about the function, and storage is a reference to the storage array and is used to store the info that will actually be displayed in Zray. So what do we want executed upon leaving the WordPress cache close function? We're going to start by entering the WordPress method for extracting plugin data. Now we don't really know what this data actually looks like, so we're going to first dump the plugins object in a new panel and see what it looks like in Zray. And the way to do this is very simple. Let's see what it looks like in Zero. Refreshing our WordPress app, we can see that a new top level plugin panel was added to Zero with an additional plugins var panel showing a tree table with a multi level array. Just a general note here the plugin storage mechanism automatically generates tables based on the actual information stored. So if an array or associative array is passed, a grid table will be created with columns as the names of the keys. If a multi-level array or an object is passed, a tree table will be created 
like in this case. Now, we'd like to extract only part of this information, say only the name and version of the plugin. So we're going to enter for each loop with another storage execution, only this time we're going to specify an array instead of the plugin's object. Refreshing our application, we can now see a new plugins panel with a grid view of the plugins and with the info we wanted to be displayed. OK, we're almost done. So the last step is to add a logo to your plugin. Now, like you can see here, Zero plugins will show the Zen logo if you don't specify otherwise. But of course, a nice and recommended touch is to add your own customized logo. To do this, you'll need to first add the logo image to the folder containing the plugin file. Please note that the image should be 24 on 24 pixels and should contain both a regular and hover state. Next, in our plugin file, we're going to use the set metadata function. In this case, we're going to use the unique key logo to set the default logo for the plugin. This is done by passing a full path to the logo file. Let's take a look. Great. So whatever app you're working on, whatever framework or platform, you can make Zero trace and display the information you want it to. In the next part of this video series, we'll be covering the subject of how to package a plugin for deploying and managing it within Zen Server. Thanks for watching.